Hello everyone, I'm Keith. I'm Kay. I'd like to discuss a topic with you that was asked of me by a viewer. Uh, he wanted to know how did I file my petitions to bring uh, my wife here uh, from, a, uh, from a foreign country. Now first of all, I've been to the Philippines about five times already. But the first three times I went there, I, the first time I went, I met the family and uh, got to know them. They got to know me. I met Kay there and we talked and talked and about a lot and had a good time. So that was the first time I went. And we still had to continue our long distance relationship. So I went back again and talked with the family and uh, got to even know them even more. Some of their relatives, you know. And the third time, the same thing. So at the third time, I decided, well, it's time for me, for her to come here. And I, proposed to her and uh, we're going to come on her on a 90 day visa so I'm going to try to explain the process that we went through to, do, uh, to get that done so the first step that we did was we searched first on Google because we didn't know what the form that we or the type of visa that we needed so the first time we planned to do it was mag-visa lang ako dito gamit yung tourist visa pero we didn't end up doing that. So, nanood lang ako ng mga YouTube ganon and then finally I found out about the K-1 visa. So, yung nalaman ko kaagad yung tungkol sa K-1 visa tinawagan ko siya sa messenger and then sinabi ko sa kanya na ito yung um, kailangan natin gawin para madalha mo ko sa US. So, we start the process. At ito yung first step na ginawa namin. So, after we found out what form we're supposed to use, uh, we got together, me and her, she was in Philippines, I was here, and we were discussing how to fill the form, or what forms we, we, we found that we had to use. And the first form we used was called a uh, form 1-I. It's form I-129 form stands for petition for alien fiancé. Yeah, this for alien fiancé. It looks like looks something like that. So yung form na unang namin yung sha mo na yung magfile dito sa US. So dito ito yung mga ito yung form na ginamit niya. Um, what I-129 form stands for petition for alien fiance so yung first page it's all about him about the petitioner yes yeah, right um dito yung tatanong kung ano yung full name niya type of petition mailing address and then information about him page two again and then you guys are gonna see after oh. that um um, information about the beneficiary. It's me. So you, we got um, um, 13 pages for I-129 form. What, 13 pages? Yeah. That's for the I-129 form, right? So, so he did it by himself. I, yan yung gagawin niya dito sa US to file petition for me. And then after that, meron yung form na form I-134. Ito yung affidavit of support. Ito yung um, ipuprove mo lang na, na kaya mong na kaya mong i-sponsor yung beneficiary mo. And you got 8 pages. This is the only two form that na kailangan natin. Kailangan niya to file the petition. So, after niya i-file to, sinan niya na sa USCIS pero nakalimutan niya ilagay yung bayad so na-deny kami first step, na-deny kami because we forgot to put the fee my fault we get denied and then after I get mad <laughs> nagalit ako kasi hindi siya sa akin nakinig sabi ko may bayad eh sigurista siya how much was the fee? sigurista siya ayaw, ayaw niyang makinig sa akin so we get denied 
the fee is um, $535. Yeah. And that's for what? The form? You tell them? Both form. I want okay. 29 form and affidavit of support. So, the second step, we filed ulit kami ng I-129 form. And then, finally, we didn't mess up. So, everything goes smoothly. So, nag-intay kami ng after niya isend sa USCIS yung mga form, nakatanggap siya ng receipt form na nagpapatunay na na-receive na ng USCIS yung form namin. So, nag-antay kami ng six months. Ex exact on six months na approved kami. So, after six months, he called me on the phone and then he said we got approved. Sobrang saya ko nun. So, na-approved na nga kami after six months. That was 2018? 2018. December 21, 2018. Naalala ko pa. So, nakatanggap siya ng approval notice. Hindi ko kasi makita yung copy ng approval notice namin. So, I'm sorry. Hindi namin mapapakita sa inyo. And then, we got two form the receipt and the approval. And then, after that, ako naman ang kikilos sa Philippines. So, share ko yung unang step na ginawa ko. Now that all the paper is completed here and we finally passed, uh, the, uh, and got a receipt number. Uh, they sent it to the, I think the embassy in the Philippines, don't they? Or, yeah, 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 the embassy. Sent the embassy in the Philippines, and then Kay has to do her part in the Philippines. I guess she, she'll explain to them what you have to yeah. do down there, okay? So, unang step na ginawa ko, kinumpleto ko muna lahat ng documents or requirements na kailangan kong dalhin, gaya ng mga birth certificate, ID, passport, yung mga copy ng receipt and approval notice namin and yung mga pictures namin yung mga messages namin, yung proof of relationship namin bago ako um, mag file ng mga form on online, kinumpleto ko muna lahat ng documents na kailangan ko. So after completed that, I went to U.S. Department of State Consular Electric Application Center. So, yung second step na ginawa ko ay nag-schedule muna ako ng aking um, medical sa St. Luke's Medical Center. So, uh, so di ako pumunta doon sa mismong um, main hospital nila. Doon, lahat ng mga may appointment na for visas like that, I think doon lang sa extension St. Luke's extension so ipapakita ko yung form na dinala ko doon sa aking medical so nagpunta kami sa St. Luke's medical extension um, appointment ko noon ay umaga so first na ginawa ko ay nagbayad muna ako so ang binayad ko ay how much did I so I paid 17 thousand twenty five pesos so I don't know how much is that exactly in US in US dollars it's about a couple of hundred couple of hundred seventeen thousand yeah. yeah four hundred to four hundred dollars like that let's just say four hundred dollars just in case so that was on February 27 2019 so um like Nagbayad, after ko magbayad, nagpunta na ako sa iba't ibang floor, nagpa... First, ginawa ko ay chinek nila yung ihi namin, yung tapos nagpa... chinek nila yung mata namin, yung mouth namin, and then after that, um, pumila na naman ako, nag na naman ako, and then, nagpa-immunization ako. So, ito yung mga three immunization that I need. Oh no, I think I just got two two vaccine here. I received two vaccine. In the Philippines? Yeah. yeah. And then this is the form they give to me. Ito lang, iti-check nyo lang dyan kung may sakit ba kayo, ganyan. And ito yung receipt ko. Yan. So, after that, binigyan nila sa aking record of vaccination document worksheet. Um, ibibigay nila yan kapag ready na yung yung x-ray mo 
at yung vaccination record mo. Titingnan nila kung nakapasa ka ba sa x-ray mo kasi kung kung if you fail the x-ray, you have to wait for 6 months to wait. So um after the second step, nag-intay lang ako ng mga around 2 days, 3 days like that. Tapos bumalik ulit ako sa sa St. Luke's Extension para kunin yung record ko na dadaling ko sa US Embassy. So pagtapos ko ay binigyan nila nag-intay na ako sa labas. Binig doon sa may mga window tapos tawagan nila yung pangalan mo if ready na. And so ito yung binigay na at nila sa Hyundai give me a brown a brown envelope naka sealed siya sabi bawal buksan US Embassy lang magbubukas noon so ito binigay nila yung copy ng vaccination documentation worksheet ko so after that I passed my x-ray so in second step lahat naman nag, mag, nag, lahat naman okay um every process goes smooth so Pagtapos ng medical ko, na first step, na kompleto ko na yung mga documents. Second step, yung medical ko. So, every, so kompleto na lahat yun. So, third step is, pumunta ako sa U.S. Department of State Consumer Electronic Application Center. So, I filed the DS-160 form. Like that. So, yan yung mga, yan, ito yung kailangan dalhin sa interview mo. So, nag-file ako nito sa, sa online and then, in pagdas kong mag-file ng online, in-schedule ko yung um, in-schedule ko yung aking interview. So, um, nag-file ako noong February 2000, February 10, 2019. So, Ito yung dadalhin natin sa interview day. So, tapos na nga. Na-schedule ko na yung interview ko. So, ang interview ko ay March 2019. So, kabado na a kiss. So, ang um, interview ko ay maaga. Like, 7.45 in the morning. So, pumunta kami doon sa US Embassy of Manila around 5 and madami ng tao sa labas yung iba yung iba kasama na yung mga asawa nila yung iba mag-isa lang kagaya ka mag-isa lang so inabot na kami ng umaga sa labas and then pinapi after that pinapila na kami and sinasabi na sinabi na kail kailangan yung picture one two by two picture or one by one i think two by two two by two two by two picture and then pinapila na kami sa labas and then pinapasok na kami sa loob ng gate pagtapos nun um, binigyan kami ng plastic like ziplock bag tapos nilagay yung passport namin doon and then punta na kami ulit sa loob pinaka loob na talaga tapos um, x-ray mga gamit namin x-ray x-ray is the x-ray right? Mm -hmm. magamit namin and then and then punta kami sa security and then after the x-ray madami ng window doon first is first step is the pipila ka bibigyan ka nila ng number like that kung saan ka pupunta o, o saan window ka pupunta so first step ay interviewin ka no Filipino consulate hindi naman siya interview um pinan naman sa ako ano pangalan ko kung anong type ng visa ko kunin ko ganun lang and then after that he, the guy interview me and ask information about me pagtapos niya step 2 pumunta ako sa window next window and then um doon na yung American na yung hindi naman siya in, sa second window hindi interview um fingerprint lang on the second window after fingerprint mag intay ka and then the third window yun na, interview dun ka na interview ng American Consulate 
So, yung sa third window na nga, nag na ako kasi yun na yung pinaka last step, the interview. Um, American consulate na yung mag interview sa inyo. So, nakapila na kaming lahat. And then, and then, it's my turn na sa interview. Sobrang kabado na talaga ako. Hindi ko alam gagawin ko. And then, ako na yung interviewin. Um, binigay ko lang yung mga pictures. Binigay ko yung Um, the S-160 form ko at hina nag-start na ng tanong sinabi lang kung kung um, when, did, when did we met where did we met and then ano yung trabaho niya and then yun lang and then pagkatapos niya akong interviewin hindi man hindi niya I got all my pictures all the lahat ng mga um, proof ng relationship namin pero hindi niya ako tinanong I think yung um, interview ko um, just like last five minutes. Five minutes lang. Sobrang bilis. Kabado ko talaga ng sobra. And then, and then sinabi nung American Consulate, okay, your visa is approved. You're just gonna wait for two weeks to receive your your visa. So, ito yung form na natanggap ko nung na-approve ako. Hindi naman siya form, papel. Papel lang siya. Bini ito yung mga papel. This is the three paper I receive. Ito yung bibigyan niya sa inyo kapag na-approve kayo. So, kapag hindi mo ito natanggap, it means you're denied. Now, didn't you have to get a sticker? Yeah. Something like that? So, when I received this, I was very happy kasi lahat ng pagod ko simula umpisa. Natapos na din at na-approve ako. At saka pinag-usapan namin dalawa na, what if we didn't get approval, we're gonna do? Cry. <laughs> Cry. <laughs> But we got approved. So, after two weeks, na-receive ko yung, after the interview in two weeks, na-receive ko yung visa ko. With, dinaliber siya sa to go. So, na-receive ko siya um, I will forget on March 19, no, March 21, 2019, na receive ko yung visa ko at saka yung, yung yellow envelope, K1 visa packet. So, nakalagay doon yung may yellow envelope doon and then nandun yung passport ko. So, yung yellow envelope, bawal mo siya buksan kasi bubuks, um, the pag nakarating ka na sa airport ng US, sila lang yung magbubukas nun. Custom and Border Patrol. Sila lang pwede magbukas nun. So, I received my visa right here. This is my visa. And then, this is what I use para mag-travel dito sa US. And then, after I receive my visa, that's not the last step. So, Wag mo na tayo mag-enjoy. So the last step is the CFO. The CFO is kailangan kailang lahat daw ng mag-a-abroad, kailangan nung kumuha ng sticker kasi kung wala kang sticker, hindi ka pwedeng makalipad, makapunta sa ibang bansa. So you need to attend the CFO. So the last step is pumunta na ako sa CFO para attend yung meeting. So that was on April 4. 2019. So, on the last step, medyo, medyo, medyo nahirapan ako doon. Kasi, um, pinabalik-balik nila ako, pinahirapan talaga nila ako. Suko na nga dapat ako, but, but I wanna come here and be with him. So, lahat yun, nalagpasan ko. So, first step is, magubayad ka na, magubayad ka ng amount of 370 to for registration fee 370 pesos and then documentary stamp tax 30 pesos so I paid 400 for everything so this is my receipt I still got my I still got my receipt here and everything that I received so after that nag um doon na kami sa isang room tapos iba ibang room yon kasi K1 visa ako so doon ako sa room ng for K1 visa lang so maraming tao doon and then 
then nagkaroon na nga ako ng friends doon then and then the meeting is all about kung ano yung in, yung magiging expectation mo kapag nakapunta ka na sa US yung mga pinagkaibahan ng culture nila pinagkaibahan ng culture natin yung mga tao yun lang naman yung meeting tapos after that um after the la after the meeting tatawagin kayo sa labas isa-isa may tatanong ata sa inyo tapos kapag pag nakapasa naman kayo kapag sinabi ng oo pwede nyo nang makuha yung sticker nyo pero yung akin pinabalik-balik nila ako so medyo natagalan ako bago makuha yung sticker so after nila ako ipabalik-balik doon finally at nakuha ko na rin ang sticker ko. So, ito yung sticker. This is how it looks like. This is the sticker. So, we need this kasi kapag wala tayo nito, hindi tayo makakapunta sa destination natin. So, after the, the meeting, binigyan nila ako ng book. Um, this is how it looks like. Like that. And then, They give me this Commission of Filipino Overseas Guidance and Counseling Certificate. Ito yung proof na umaten ka ng CFO, CFO meeting. So CFO means is Commission on Filipinos Overseas. So finally, I got everything complete and then ready to go. What did this book explain? Oh, this book is just all about handbook for Filipinos migrating to the United States of America. So, mga information lang kung ano yung mga rights mo dito sa US, tapos kung ano yung kapag may nangyari sa yung masama, nandito yung mga hotline na pwede mong tawagan para humingi ng tulong. So, that's the process you had to go through to come here to America. I know most of it was in Tagalog. That's for the Filipino audiences. Uh, we'll do one in English at, at a later date so American people can hear exactly the procedure we went through. But uh, that's it. So anyone you interested in coming here from the Philippines and you got a uh, foreigner that's going to petition you, those are the necessary steps you have to go through. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You liked this video. I hope it was very informative to you. Gave you a lot of information. Uh, If there's anything else you'd like to do, just comment below. Leave a nice comment below and we'll answer it. So anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourself, whatever geographical part of Earth you are from. And please subscribe below. Please. Ring the bell and subscribe below, please. And we'll see you on the next video. See you later.